In January 2019, eBay released a policy that is known as the eBay dropshipping policy. Before that time, it was very much allowed to sell on eBay and then source the products from retailers like Amazon, Home Depot, and Walmart, and from marketplaces like AliExpress. It was so allowed that we at DSM2 had a personal account manager for customers of ours in the eBay offices. She hosted our team for visits, we went on meetings, we're still keeping in touch with the eBay team until today. Since the policy was released, dropshippers started getting emails which are titled, your top rated seller status will be removed, selling practices, dropshipping. I'm going to explain this email and we're gonna break it down in this video. But the thing is that even after the eBay dropshipping policy was released, I personally still think that it's the best or one of the best business models for beginners who wants to start an online business and are making their first steps. But I also think that in the industry of dropshipping and specifically the industry of eBay dropshipping, there is not enough honest and transparent discussion about the risks that comes up together with the business model and together with the fact that you're going to start doing eBay dropshipping. And I hope that this video will answer some of those questions and some of those concerns. So the first question we're going to answer is what is the dropshipping policy? We're gonna break it down. And I'm not, I know that there are a lot of videos out there about what is the dropshipping policy, but I hope to give you a little bit different perspective. Um, and then we're going to move into what are eBay flagged accounts. We're gonna break down that email that I mentioned about the selling practices policy. And we're going to talk about all of the implications of working on eBay with flagged accounts. Then I'm going to uh, move to a subject which is should you or shouldn't you above using, uh, should you or shouldn't you avoid using a software when you're doing eBay dropshipping? So a lot of people are talking about manual dropshipping and non API software. I'm going to explain all of that. Then we'll move to asking the question whether dropshipping is or isn't illegal, uh, sorry, is or isn't legal. Um, and I, actually, I'm going to talk about the illegal implications that, or the illegal activities that happens in the dropshipping industry. And we're going to finish by talking, by giving you general tips about how to avoid suspensions if you're planning to start an online uh, dropshipping business doing eBay dropshipping. I just want to say that if you are looking to start an eBay dropshipping business, then there is a lot more than just that to cover. And I want to invite you to explore the option to take the eBay dropshipping for beginners course that I released on Entrepreneur Zone. So I contributed to the Entrepreneur Zone community an entire course for beginners about eBay dropshipping. You're welcome to come and learn with me. Entrepreneur Zone is kind of like a Netflix of all kinds of courses about digital marketing and about how to start an online business. And one of the subjects is eBay dropshipping. This is why I contributed the course there. It costs $10 a month and you can find the link in the description below. I think that the price might change by the time that you, because I know that they're thinking about increasing the price, but at the moment of recording this video, it's $10 a month. All right, so let's start with the eBay dropshipping policy. This is the policy in general. I'm not gonna read it out now, but if you would go, if you would look for eBay dropshipping policy on Google, you would find that page fairly quickly. Um, and let's break it down and see what eBay is talking about. eBay starts the policy by defining the term dropshipping. They're saying dropshipping, also known as product sourcing, is when you buy a stock from a supplier and work with them to send the items directly to your buyers without ever handling yourself. So if in the past you would have to buy stock and then, I don't know, let's say this is my office, you would have to stock it behind you. And when someone buys from you, you would literally take a package, take it to the post office and ship it. In, in the dropshipping, according to uh, eBay, you can use a third party to do all of the fulfillment for you, but you have to own the stock. Um, and you might be thinking to yourself, why would eBay even, con like, why would even eBay waste their time? Who doesn't know what dropshipping means? Everyone knows what dropshipping means, right? So that's not entirely true because the term dropshipping is relatively a new term in our world. If you look at how many people search for that term dropshipping, you would see that around 2014, 
it started growing around 2016 is when DSM-2 was established. And in the past years, the, just the term is becoming more and more popular. And I think that that's maybe why eBay decided that they want to first put a definition for you guys, to, for, for everyone, for all of us to understand what is dropshipping according to eBay. Then the um, policy continues. And like, there is literally, if you go to the policy page, there is literally a yellow mark on some of the words there, on some of the sentences, just to make sure that you understand that eBay put their emphasis on that. And they say dropshipping, where you fulfill orders directly from a wholesale supplier is allowed on eBay. And here, when eBay wrote that in their policy, they didn't exactly explain what does it mean dropshipping where you fulfill orders directly from wholesale suppliers. So since the policy was out, there are a couple of different terms that people are using when they describe what wholesale dropshipping is. And I want to go over, there are three different um, ways that people define wholesale dropshipping on eBay. And I want to, give, to get you familiar with all three of them. Um, but we already know that according to the policy, it is allowed, right? And we're going to start with the first one, which is pretty straightforward. It makes the most sense also in com when you compare it to the first sentence that we just read a minute ago about buying a stock. The first wholesale dropshipping method is to buy a stock. And if you want to comply with that policy, I want to show you a specific example of uh, how you can do it. Or sorry, if you want to comply with that sentence of, or if you want to define wholesale dropshipping as dropshipping where you buy a stock, then I want to give you an example of where you can do that. You can do that on a website like alibaba.com. Alibaba.com, uh, maybe you've heard of it. If I, it's, it looks like any shopping website, it can look like Amazon or anything, but if I would look for anything, let's say USB type C cable, and then I would click search, what you would see is that other than seeing the price, there is also a minimum order meaning it's also known as MOQ, minimum uh, order quantity. Meaning that if I want to buy this cable, I have to order a thousand pieces of it. This is a business to business approach. I don't buy, I'm not a, a buyer that comes to a retail store and buy something, I buy it in box. And then you can buy it here and you sh can ship it to a warehouse and you own the stock and that warehouse can fulfill the orders for you and you do drop shipping. Another option is to use uh, for example, a Chinese agent like CJ Dropshipping, and we're going to go back to CJ Dropshipping a little bit later in this video again, which again, looks like a normal website. CJ Dropshipping is also provides uh, what I call dropshipping friendly uh, uh, services, and I'm going to explain that later. But one of the things that you can do if you go into CJ Dropshipping is to click on the button that says sourcing. And if you would click on sourcing, then you would get to a page that you can start a process of requesting them to source products for you. And they can also source it for drop shipping where the minimum order uh, quantity is one. So that's like, you don't need to buy stock ahead if you want to drop ship products from CJ Dropshipping. But you can actually reduce the price if you tell them, hey, I'm going to uh, buy a hundred products and they will actually warehouse it for you. So they will give you the full range of services in comparison to Alibaba where you can just uh, buy the product and then you have to work with your own warehouse. CJ dropshipping is kind of a one-stop shop with everything. They have the warehouses, they literally have everything that you get. And then you own a stock. And according to the policy, uh, it, you both own a stock and it's wholesale supplier. So you comply with the policy. But nobody likes to buy a stock, right? If you have to buy a head, a stock of products, if you have to buy a thousand pieces, who knows if you're going to sell them. Therefore, Another way or another method that is being becoming more and more popular and is also called wholesale dropshipping is to get a contract with wholesale suppliers. Usually I see it mostly happening in the United States and the process is the following. First, you get a reseller certificate in the United States. So either you're a US citizen, I live in Israel, I'm not a US citizen, so I would have to incorporate a company in the United States, and then uh, you get something that is called reseller certificate or wholesale certificate, I can't remember how it's called, and then you start contacting uh, suppliers online. You literally search for suppliers online, 
uh, which are wholesale suppliers, you get in contract with them. Sometimes you have to put some deposit, sometimes you have to, like, there are all kinds of different requirements really depending on the supplier. And what happens is that is then you don't have to hold stock. They have all of their stock they're going to send you uh, in usually in uh, Excel files. You would get huge Excel files with tons of, of products in them, with the price, with everything. And then you could sell those products and every time that you make the sale, you would order it from there, from them. Now you don't, in, in those case, you, cases, you don't buy a stock, but you have a, an actual wholesale supplier that you are in an actual uh, uh, contract with. And you, uh, let's say that you do it in the US market, right? In Europe, it's different. In other countries, it's different. But let's say for the sake of the uh, educational example that we're talking about the United States, then you have also like a government, a federal, or it's not a federal, it's in, in the state level, but like you have a, a, a wholesale certificate or a reseller certificate. So it's kind of like, it makes it all a little, everything uh, seems more legit while you don't have to hold any stock. That's why it's also known as wholesale dropshipping. And the last thing that is being referred to as wholesale dropshipping, I personally refer to it also as wholesale dropshipping, although it's technically not exactly a wholesale dropshipping, is using is by using uh, dropshipping friendly suppliers, which is kind of similar to option number two, only that most of the dropshipping friendly suppliers are not US wholesalers, rather there are uh, Chinese agencies like, for example, CJ dropshipping, which we just showed before, the website of CJ dropshipping allows you to uh, buy the, the products one by one so you can sell the product and only then buy them uh, from CG Dropshipping. Another website that is dropshipping friendly is banggood.com. All of these websites which are dropshipping friendly, uh, you can actually uh, use DSM tool to list those products to your store. And the reason that I call them dropshipping friendly and that there are a lot of times referred to also as wholesale uh, suppliers is because the, when you drop ship from Amazon or from uh, Walmart, Home Depot, then the packages that are being shipped to your buyers are branded packages with usually an invoice on them. There are ways to hide that invoice, but generally speaking, the packages are branded as Amazon or branded as Home Depot, Walmart. When you drop ship a package from Banggood or CG Dropshipping, these are not websites that are meant, they, they don't advertise to regular customers. The, the, all of the customers of CG Dropshipping and Banggood, or at least most of the customers, are dropshippers. Therefore, they know and they package everything very, very dropshipping friendly. And they have dropshipping programs and discounts for dropshippers. They're, they're very, very business to business oriented. They're just located in China, so they don't officially count as wholesalers. But basically speaking, they're kind of like agents. They're kind of like wholesalers. And that's why this method is also a lot of times counted as wholesale suppliers for dropshipping. And hopefully, also it complies with the eBay dropshipping policy. I'll tell you even more than that. From Banggood and from other websites like Costway and other uh, dropshipping friendly websites that we work with in DSM tool, you can also get from them an agreement, a contract. It's not a contract. You don't sign a contract with them, but you get a dropshipping agreement. And if you would go to the blog of DSM tool, there are articles that explain how to get those agreements. So it's kind of, as I said, more similar to the second way. So on one hand, in method one, you buy a stock, and this is the only method that is very literally according to the dropshipping policy of eBay. But on the other hand, with methods two and three, you don't have to buy a stock, but they still pretty much comply with uh, the dropshipping policy of eBay that says that dropshipping from wholesale suppliers is allowed. I'm gonna go back to the last part of the dropshipping policy, where eBay is stating quite clearly, listing item on eBay and then purchasing I that item from another retailer or marketplace that ships directly to your customers is not allowed. It's not allowed, but it's working. And that's why people continue doing it. And that's why it's still popular. And you know what? Let me just show you. This seller on eBay is not allowed to sell this product for $22.31 
already 37 times and then source it from, let's say, AliExpress for between eight to 14 and a half dollars. This seller on eBay is definitely not allowed to sell this product for $16.56 43 times already and then source it from AliExpress starting at $2.38. I'm not even going over the calculation of how to calculate profits in dropshipping because there are eBay fees and PayPal fees, whatever. Like it's quite clearly that they're making profits here. And this seller is not allowed to sell this product seven times for $9.70 and then source it for $3.25. And I could go on and on and on because there's so many products like this. The point is that all of these sellers that are performing eBay dropshipping as their business model and that are sourcing the products from websites like AliExpress are playing a game of a business in low risk. If you would start a dropshipping business with a Shopify, with, uh, sorry, with building a Shopify website, then you would have to pay for advertisement. If you would start by doing wholesale dropshipping with the first, me first method that I presented, by buying stock from Alibaba, for example, you would invest in inventory. When doing dropshipping from retailers and marketplaces, you don't have to invest in inventory and you are playing a game of organic traffic. You're trying to get on the first page of the search results of, on, on eBay. And that's, that's what I teach to do. This is what my course teaches to do. This is what people are doing everywhere when they're doing eBay dropshipping. And that counts as a low risk business model. And that's why it wins the hearts of so many people. But as I promised you, there are also implications that you need to understand and that I want to be transparent with you about them and cover them in this video. So I'm going to start by talking about what are eBay flagged accounts and what happens when you get that email that says selling practices policy and that you are going to and that email states that you're going to lose your top seller rank. So if you're going to get that mail and your account is getting flagged, you already know that you're going to lose the top rated seller status. Actually, even if you don't have the top, top rated seller status, you will still get that email. And that basically means that you're not eligible anymore to become top rated seller. But what the hell does top rated seller even mean? The top rated seller program as described on the website of eBay comes with a couple of benefits. And this is why it is such a, let's call it luxurious, um, like such a luxury to have this status for your account. It's, I'm going to only read one sentence here. Top rated sellers receive enhanced visibility in the eBay search results. And if you remember a couple of minutes ago, I said that our game as eBay dropshippers is to manage to find ways to appear on the first page results of any search that is being done on eBay organically. And if you're going to choose to do eBay dropshipping, you saw that people make sales. I'm not saying you're not going to get any visibility, but let's say from the 100% uh, uh, traffic or potential buyers, of this, the 100% of this cake that eBay can offer, they would offer more, more of that cake to the sellers that are top rated sellers than to sellers that can't get to the top rated uh, status. And by choosing to dropship from retailers, you reduce the risk by not buying any inventory, but then you also uh, lose some gain that you would get if you would be able to become a top rated seller. And this is one of the things, one of uh, the things that I told you that are risks. I don't think that it's any way relevant for someone who never sold anything online, who's just wanted, want to start an online business and doesn't want to specifically become like, you know, a, a wholesaler or buy stocks and sell them on eBay. And if you, you know, if you actually want to buy big stocks and sell them on eBay, maybe that's something that you should definitely consider. But if you're more like the type of person that is just right now looking to start an online business, then I don't think that becoming top rated seller should be the top of your concerns at the moment. But there is actually another thing that comes with accounts getting flagged and with doing dropshipping from retailers and marketplaces. And there is no official email that you will get about it. This is only all information from 
uh, dropshipping communities that I'm a member of, like the DSM tool dropshipping community on Facebook that I highly invite you to uh, join as well. And you can see here a post from 2018. Uh, and the reason that this post is from 2018 is because first, this is when this phenomena started. This is actually when the term flag or the, the idea that eBay flags accounts of dropshippers started. And it has to do with another way to gain uh, traffic of potential buyers from eBay that is not the organic search results. It's by using a feature that is called promoted listings. The idea of the feature is that you define some fee. Let's say you say sell a product for $100 and you can define a fee of 20% and you define it in that feature that is called promoted listings. And then eBay would advertise the, your product outside of the eBay platform on different websites, on social media, whatever, wherever they could advertise. You could advertise yourself too, right? You could just advertise the products, pay for ads on Facebook or on Instagram and drive traffic of buyers uh, to your products. But you say to eBay, hey guys, I'm willing to pay you the fee, go manage all of the, all of the advertising yourself. And if they manage to sell any of your products through that advertising, you then pay them the fee. So the promoted listings feature started getting throttling for, for uh, eBay dropshippers. They just stopped getting visibility from, uh, from, from promoted listings. There, there is a, tons of speculation about why. I'm not gonna go into that. The point is that, um, and, and by the way, it happened in 2018 and then it stopped and then the visibility came back in 2019 and then again it stopped and now it's again back. So it's not 100% sure that whether uh, the promoted listings feature would work for you or wouldn't work for you. What is 100% sure is that you can't rely on it as a stable source of, um, of traffic, of potential buyers to your, to your business. And that is something that is important to understand if you're going to start doing uh, eBay dropshipping. That means that you are much more limited to the amount of traffic that you can get to your product. And if you're much more limited with the amount of traffic that you can get to your product, that means that the total profits that you can make uh, are also limited as well in comparison to maybe other alternatives that you have. So that's another thing that I still think makes it a, doesn't, it's not, you know, it's not take a break. I mean, it's, it's still, I would still consider eBay dropshipping as one of the best options for beginners. But as you can see, there are also implications and things that you have to consider and you have to know ahead when you're starting an eBay dropshipping business. The next question we had is whether to use a dropshipping software or not for eBay dropshipping. And the thing is that I just showed you a moment ago post from 2018 and we talked about flagged accounts and we talked about all kinds of things. And throughout that time, because this industry is an industry of thousands of people and YouTube influencers and courses online and all that kind of stuff, then there were all kinds of people that decided that they know what would be the solution for this problem and how you can overcome the, the fact that eBay might throttle some traffic to your product and that there, there is a solution that is not to comply with the eBay dropshipping policy. And the solution is to work manually without an eBay dropshipping software. And this way eBay would not detect you. And I told you that I'm going to talk about it, but in order to keep this video a little bit shorter, what I would recommend you to do is I would recommend you to uh, go to uh, the video that I created. Uh, it's maybe three videos ago before this video, and you can just look for it uh, in the YouTube channel and I'll leave a link to it in the description below, where I go over all of that myth and I break it down completely and I show all of the history of software uh, for eBay dropshipping and explain to you why it's a complete myth and you should definitely use a software for eBay dropshipping. You should avoid using non-API softwares, which is very, very dangerous for your account and definitely should avoid manual dropshipping at least this is my opinion and according to the facts that I'm going to show to you. So if you encounter any of that information, then I hope that this video would be uh, useful for you and would help you and that would, uh, and, and I think that people were just afraid to tell you the, to be honest about the implications of eBay dropshipping and to say that it's harder to do eBay dropshipping these days. You get less traffic from eBay. You might generate less sales. You're not eligible to the top rated seller. So you might even get less traffic to your product and generating traffic to your products 
when you're doing eBay dropshipping has become much, much harder over the years. And I think that's why people were looking for all kind of fake, secret, magical, unreal solutions. So I would leave that question uh, to the other video. And speaking of solutions, fake solutions, I also want to address the question of whether dropshipping has become illegal. And I want to say that not complying with the eBay dropshipping policy is, does not mean that your business is going to be an illegal business. This is a policy on eBay side that they enforce in this way or another by reducing the, uh, the top rated uh, uh, status or harming some of the promoted listings. But if you think about it, if it would be illegal, then eBay would probably already shut down the entire business and would chase people like me and, I don't know, report me to the authorities. There's nothing illegal about doing dropshipping. Dropshipping is just a method that you use, a technical method of how you ship the products. But there are, in every industry, from the pharmaceutical industry of, of curing people to the weapons industry of defending or killing people, in every single industry, there are legal and illegal activities. And I think that if you're considering to start eBay dropshipping, then it's important that you would know what are the illegal activities that you might encounter that are happening and that are being advertising open, advertised openly. And when they're being advertised, they're being advertised in packages of hey, do you want to change your life? Or hey, come make millions of dollars with eBay dropshipping. I mean, not millions of dollars, but like, you know, come make way more than what you can do. Um, because nobody wants to tell you that it's illegal, right? So uh, some of the uh, illegal activities that you might encounter uh, is buying discounted gift cards with Bitcoin. So uh, when you sell a product on eBay and let's say you source it from Amazon, then a lot of times people used to use, it's a little bit less common today, but a lot of times uh, people used to use gift cards in order to purchase on Amazon. And then if you can buy discounted gift cards, and if you think about it, instead of paying $100 for the gift cards and with that buying your product, you pay $80 for a $100 gift card, and then you increase your general profit for your uh, business. But if you would be offered to buy it with Bitcoin, it's usually coming from the black market. It is you... It might be money laundering, it might be all kind of, so this is one type of illegal activity. Second illegal activity that is quite popular and I don't support whatsoever is to build a network of stealth, uh, of fake identity stealth accounts. And the way to, uh, to analyze these, the, the people that are actually entire software companies who are doing that, uh, the way to identify the people that are uh, engaged in this illegal activity is when they tell you that they have multiple eBay accounts, let's say more than 30 eBay accounts. I saw someone that has more than 100 eBay accounts. These are a hundred percent of, let's say 99% of the times, just in case it's, it's not relevant for someone, are accounts that are all managed using fake identities, using fake details for their PayPal account, which is like having a fake identity in your bank account. And um, if you want to understand why is it illegal, then let me give you an example uh, right now. Overstock is a retail chain that sells, well, overstocks, liquidation of stocks, and they own one single eBay store. They're a huge business and they only require one business store. It doesn't make sense that us as small businesses, as eBay dropshippers, would need more than one eBay store. And what the people do when they build a network of stealth accounts is that they uh, duplicate the same product. So they take the same product and they list it to multiple stores if it's successful in order to try to uh, be most of the competition for that product, block other people that might consider selling that product and get all of the sales to themselves, which is violating dozens of, of uh, eBay policies, which is illegal because they're using fake identities, which is unfair to uh, potential competitors, et cetera, et cetera. You might hear another term that is related to building fake identity stealth account networks, which is the big number rules, the big numbers rule. So if you hear that term, that is also related to this type of activity. Um, then the next illegal activity is buying fake watchers. If you're being offered, so watchers on eBay, actually, let me show you that. In 
every eBay product, there is an option to add the product to a watch list, which is basically kind of like adding the product to a wish list. And if a lot of people are adding your product to a, a watch list, eBay naturally and organically push you up in the, uh, in the search results uh, of the eBay search engine. So engaging also buying watches uh, or watchers is an illegal activity that can lead you to suspensions to your account or I don't know what eBay can do with you. It's just illegal. And the last illegal activity, and there are more illegal activity, obviously, activities, obviously, uh, is using fake UPC numbers, uh, which is, uh, I'm not going to go into what is UPC numbers. Actually, I'll tell you what, it's, the, it's a barcode. Like if you look at, uh, at this, you see that there is a little barcode here on my notebook. Under it, there is a number. This number is what's so-called UPC. And sometimes people are using fake UPC numbers in order to avoid being detected by potential competitors. Uh, that's an illegal activity. It messes up with the eBay catalog. And again, activity that happens in the industry of dropshipping, but is illegal. Now, I can't tell you to engage or not to engage in these activities. Like in every industry, some of these methods which are illegal might be more profitable. I personally, I'm not willing to go in that direction. And I'm, if you are going in that direction, I, I give up on you as a DSM tool customer. We're looking for honest people that are looking to build actual businesses. Um, but again, you will see those uh, things happening. So you've been warned. That's all, I, that's all I, I could say. I'm going to move to the next and last question that I'm going to answer in this video, and which is how to avoid suspensions um, when you are working when you are doing eBay dropshipping, because as we said, you're not going to work according to the policy. How do you keep your account alive for the next two to three years and avoid getting suspended on eBay? And I'm going to give here a couple of like general tips and I'll show you also where you can see that. Uh, I if you are just a beginner again, I really hope that you would choose to take the course that I'm giving where I cover really everything and I show everything to much, uh, like I go much deeper into all of these subjects. Uh, but if you avoid late shipments, if you, uh, if, if you, sorry, if you define your shipping policy, which is the policy, your commitment to your buyers, how long will it take you to, how long will it take the products to arrive to them? If you define it correctly, according to the retailer or marketplace that you're working with, uh, then you avoid late shipments and there is high chance that you will manage then to avoid uh, suspensions. If you avoid something that is called defect rates on eBay, which is one of two things, either to uh, sell a product and then cancel the order, claiming that that product is out of stock, which can happen, especially if you're working with retailers, a little bit less common when you work with a website like AliExpress. But if you work with Amazon, for example, it can happen that you sell a product and then you go to buy that product and the product went out of stock. And then what you would want to do is you want to go to another supplier, look for that product somewhere else, order it, have it arrive to your customer, or maybe even if it costs more, you would still want to avoid a defect rate. You would lose on that deal, but you would avoid a defect rate. Or another option is to uh, look for a similar product or a more premium product and offer that to your customer to keep them happy. Anything that you can do to avoid to canceling the order and saying that, it, that, the, that you don't have that product in stock, that's a defect rate. Another defect rate is that if a buyer received or didn't receive the product and they opened the case against you, which is something that they can do, well, you can do as a buyer, so they can do as buyers as well. I mean, if you buy on Amazon or eBay, uh, if you would not respond to those cases and they will get closed without you answering them, you will get a defect rate. And those defect rates would harm your account, would lead you to a suspension. If you make sure that you update the tracking numbers on time, and on time means on eBay, there is something that is called the handling time. Handling time is your commitment. You set it up in your shipping policy. It's your commitment uh, for how long will it take you to process the order. So let's say you would have a physical store. How long would it take you to take the pen, package it, ship it, get a tracking number and update it on eBay? We're doing it also when we're doing eBay dropshipping and we set handling time. So let's say you set the three days handling time, you would have from the moment that you sold the item until you updated the tracking number, to, you would, there would have to be less than three days passing. So you have to do it on time. 
If you provide excellent customer service, you care for your customers, you give them answers, you help them with whatever they need, you avoid suspensions. If you make sure that you at all answer them, right? We have a messages center in DSM tool. You have the messages on eBay. Just make sure that you give good customer support. And if you avoid selling uh, uh, items that are either restricted or part of the Vera program, which I could do another 10 minutes uh, of, so I'm not going to cover that in this video. If you avoid selling this kind of product that are basically products that you're not allowed to sell on eBay, uh, you should be generally just fine. I wanted to show you that most of the things that I was talking about actually appear in your eBay account in something that is called the seller hub. You have to opt into the seller hub. So if you have an eBay account, look for Google for opting into the seller hub if you don't have it activated. But in the seller hub, here at the bottom, there is something that is called the seller level. And um, you can see that I'm above standard. If I, would be, if I would not be doing, well, this account is not an active account, but uh, it's only for educational purposes. But this is exactly where you can become supposedly top rated. Uh, your seller level can become top rated. And this is, what is, this is where, where eBay means that you cannot become top rated. But if I would, uh, but um, the, other the other option that you, that you have other than becoming a top rated seller is to become a below standard seller. You see, here are the three steps. Below standard in red, above standard in gray, and top rated. So your mission is to never drop to below standard. Never get defect rate, never get late shipment. See, it's exactly what I talked about. Never have cases closed without your resolution. Always upload tracking numbers on times. And there is also requirement for transactions and sales. But if you would see the requirements of amount of transactions and sales is only for top rated, and we're anyway not eligible to top rate it. So what's really important for us is to never drop to the below standard in our seller level report, which you can find in the seller hub and click on it and see it uh, if you go in. I really hope that this video and this lesson has been informative to you. I really hope that it answers some of your concerns about starting an eBay dropshipping business, or maybe you already run an eBay dropshipping business and you're just not really sure because there is so much different information out there from different parties that has different interests in terms of uh, what they want from you. Maybe they want your money more than they want your success. I don't know. I don't want to point a finger at anyone. All I want to say is that if you did like it, I would really appreciate it if you, if you would help the growth of our company by liking that video, considering to subscribe to our YouTube channel, joining our Facebook community, and maybe share this video whenever you see in one of the communities a discussion that is opened about the eBay dropshipping policy. I'll see you in the next video, and until next time.